me leaves messages on a machine that are kind of odd. Uh, last, last, that message I remember him leaving was he left uh, jockeys, pains, and frugaloo. That's all that was on the machine, people. So I called my mother and said, uh, I think this guy is losing it. My dad's Meshuggah. My mom says to me, well, you did say leave a brief message. Uh. <laughs> I didn't say she sucked my dick, ladies and gentlemen. I said she said leave a brief message. You see how there's, see the conjurer in? haircut and so I came down and then because there weren't enough comics they just asked me to go up and there was beer involved so I said yes of course, of course. and then I got off and everybody said you're really funny I'm like that's easy mm. and it wasn't after that <laughs> <laughs> the first time it glowed and then I ended up posting it about six months later I took over and then so you never would have gotten into stand-up except for that damned hairstyle you know what it's true that the only reason I started doing stand-up was because of a bad hairstyle and also because well it just didn't seem that hard Because I don't have first timers on tonight, it should be a good show. But you know what? Maybe one of them will suck out loud and that'll make me feel happy. <laughs> I know it's supposed to be about me, but if they really kill, then I'm gonna like, no more for them. Okay, shit. <laughs> <laughs> off, you're not on. Scratch him off the list. He's not even on. I got power. Yeah, big power, Joe. Eight people in the room, half of them are comics. We got big power. I made these posters, I can change them. Oh, yeah, okay, now, uh, the fine for you? Sure, sure. Okay, good. If you sit up in the front, I'm gonna fuck with you. <laughs> you know what I mean? Everything's good. Oh, shut up. It's my show. I can say whatever I want. Yeah. And then, remember for a while my name was Queen of the Carpet? That's, because, yeah, that's oh right. my god. Because yeah. spirits would only let me control the people that actually sat where the carpet was. Right? If they were in the back, yeah, they were allowed probably, to talk. Yeah. Oh, they're talking in the back. Uh, yeah, so I, I have to tell everybody, I, I only control like the first four rows and then they talk in the back, so I apologize right off the top. Okay, shut up! No, we're not having a fight, people. I have no recollection of my first time in spirits at all. Like, and I think, of any time? I think <laughs> yes, no, I have many recollections of many times. I just think I think it's all sort of morph into one. And I came down and there was no wall there. And I remember you because it was like two years in when I started. Yeah. And I remember you telling people to shut up. Yeah. And that scared me. 
And then I remember asking for a spot, and it was like, yeah, in a few weeks. And you sort of wrote down my name, and I had my big calendar book with me. <laughs> didn't you come down? You came down with Tim Nutt, didn't you? Yeah. From the Ups? And you asked me to go on, I went, yeah. And I didn't realize that was a big scary thing. I didn't know I was supposed to hang out in the back and badmouth everyone. <laughs> but, I was, but I went right up, and then that's that's the night uh, Steve Patterson broke the uh, door. Was that, and the whole, that was my very first I night. I was like, I got to come here every Wednesday. <laughs> I'm just going down to spirits. It's, it's brand new. Oh yeah, what goes on? I really don't know. Helly greeted me at the bar. Hi, would you like to go on? And it was Jennifer Whalen, who was uh, the waitress at the time, the Second City uh, uh, comic. And she brought me up after she brought out some food. I'll just get those wings, and then I'll bring out. <laughs> Places that Paul and I would try to hit. And there was never, no one would ever show up at the Sunny's Cafe anyways. We would just sort of wait for as long as, as we could for someone to show. And then, then we just then Dave Cornell would be like, well, let's just make it a workshop, and it was like, let's just go somewhere else. <laughs> <laughs> you come like in, that. you come in from the groundhog, all beat to shit, and then you come here, and it's like, thank you, I needed oh. this hug. Well, yeah. I remember the time when uh, Andrew Clark did the first review here. Yeah, and it was you that sent Andrew to, to yeah. review the show, and so I get here, and it's totally not ready for comedy. And it's horrible. It's fucking brutal. Yeah. But what happened was Andrew wrote the article, and because of that, and I will thank you for that. I said to Hilly, because I'm all, I'm like, you'll never know who's in this room, so every Wednesday we have to be ready for press. For press. <laughs> yeah. The funny thing was, because it was such a horrible night. It was oh, such it was a brutal. horrible night, and I'm on, and I'm doing bits, and it's just horrible, and I go, yeah, yeah it's the nurture pit, like being sarcastic, because it's just abysmal yeah. at night. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And, but he takes it as, you know, the, the nurture pit, and it's great, and he's right, it's a place where people flourish and grow, <laughs> and stuff. Yeah. And yeah. He did put a pause on the swing with you. Ah, ah. It gives inexperienced comedians, don't look this way. Ah, we see one now. A place to learn and professionals a place to experiment. The little co point that I want to make now because there's no pros in the room. Okay, they're not here. They don't experiment. They come up and do their da best 10 minutes for you fools and you think it's amazing. They've done it 3,000 times. <laughs> And then the Yucks comics would come and sit on the back table yeah, yeah, yeah. and talk oh, about us. Oh, yeah. And none of them had the guts to come on stage. Exactly. Which exactly. I found infuriating. And I would tell them all to shush. Yeah, and you right. That was my I was I angered every comic by well, that was, I remember that. Uh, we couldn't get on anywhere else. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, you know, so, this would be our sanctuary and well, most of us started as oh. amateurs and did this oh. room and were well because we didn't have anything else, so we did it. And then when pros would come in and do the like yuck yucks yes. headline set, yeah, the and same. we would, and, and we would be like, what are you doing? I mean, that's what <laughs> There's three coming later, so if anybody says I said that, <laughs> I'll deny it. No, but they do come out and they do support the show, and, and uh, you know that little thing in the back with my freak show last week with the ten pros kind of gives you an idea that there's not a lot of stage time in the city. <laughs> Thank you, it's so nice to see real life human beings that I can spew to instead of just my fucking television set. <laughs> my arm is getting sore from throwing socks at the screen. Um, but later on, once we established gig, like I could have the biggest, co like Patton Oswalt was here, yeah. still no respect. Do you know what I mean? Harlan Williams comes with Kevin Hearn. Yeah, you know, it's not Andy so Blitz was you? Andy Blitz was here, and you had to tell me who he was because yeah. I was an idiot. And I sit and through the goddamn off. whole show. I get everybody's attention. I just want everybody to know that I'm feeling very depressed. I'm just telling you my opinion. I don't really care. Oh, it, but this is funny. <laughs> Nobody laughs just looking at the word. How y'all doing? <laughs> okay, okay. I'm going to say right now I'm wasted. I know what you're all thinking. Why the long face, Ed? Why the long face, eh? <laughs> no, I didn't say repeat what I say. <laughs> are th these are your friends, Joe? Be nice, eh? I have to be nice. <laughs> How's everybody doing tonight? <laughs> Lots of seats. Hey, is this fucking thing running? What's going on here? Thank you, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm speaking closely to the mic. Nobody's listening anyway, though, Joe, so I'm just doing this for me. Hi, Irish guys. <laughs>
Hello. Hello. Uh, recently, I was planning my funeral. Too much around here, huh? Well, good evening, folks. I hope you're having a, a good time. Thank you, Joanna. Welcome, Jason. Good evening, everybody. Oh, you're too kind. Thank you very much. Yeah. All I have to say to you is... What? Konnichiwa! <laughs> I would have gave up comedy years ago. <laughs> Dude! <laughs> oh, what a great place to try some new stuff, eh? So how, how's everyone doing that's paying attention? By far, this is the best comedy show in the Toronto Comedy Festival. Uh, <laughs> by far! Uh, I'm, yeah, excuse me, no offense, but I'm just going to get back here. Now. <laughs> that's a very lovely poster. I'm smiling right now, can you tell? Thank you very much. And then, like, and, the, and, and no one's ever said, like, if Spirits was a person, no one's ever sat here, Spirits down and said, okay, you gotta start behaving yourself. <laughs> the fact that this crazy shit still happens, what I like is the fact that it's still a room for us, and it's just as much as it's uh, a room for our audience people to come down, audience people. Uh, for a crowd to come down to. Been around but a while. Yeah. And then they had to stop wing night. Yeah, that, that's, that's a testament to the success they of Spirits. That they, there was too many wings getting eaten. <laughs> people. And they were too cheap. Yeah, cheap. yeah a ten cent. And then they turned to half price pizza night. Yeah. 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 And then we know that you've gone over the, the next stop. barrier yeah. when they stop. Okay, there's too much pizza going missing. There was no fear because zero. Well, when you perform for nine people, <clears throat> and especially me hosting for sometimes up to three and a half hours. When I started, I, I used to get fearful any time. <laughs> Were you fearful? But all of well, this, this room, I mean, initially, yeah. you're, you're, you're not afraid here. of it, yeah. but this is where you learn how to talk. This yeah. is where you learn how to yeah. walk. Yeah. Realizes that we, we did it for what? Nobody in the audience. There wasn't anyone. Like, every once well, in a while, there was always a crowd. Okay, right Kathy. Kathy. Yeah. Kathy, how do you describe Kathy? Wow. Do you, well, uh, transgendered? Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's a good yeah. Kind of, a, kind of a, I don't know how old she'd be. 50s? Yeah, oh, yeah. 50s like in her 50s with kind of a swinging London look? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> kind of a... So we have 20, okay, we have one, two, sir, are you a comic? Please enjoy the rest of the show, and please stay because uh, not everybody on the show sucks. <laughs> okay. So stick around, enjoy the rest of the show. Come on. Sure, go ahead. You already had your time on stage, get the fuck out of here. Hey, Greg. Greg. Don't be so mean. All right, on your fucking time. Don't, don't be so mean. Okay. <laughs> oh, jeez. That's Glenn. Pardon my asshole. He's a friend. <laughs> we got the t-shirt and everything. When... It's hysterical when people are leaving and I'm on, isn't it?
Okay, so you know tonight's all about me, right? Like I just invited other people so I'd have time to drink in between. I can't stop there now. I got blank stairs happening here. Anyway, you've been great. Thank you very much. Have a great but the interesting thing is when you watch your friend, like for me, watching my buddies on stage, and they might open with something that they're familiar with, but then they will go to that next level. Mm -hmm. And watching my friends, for me, and for the, the regulars, because we do have people that are here, watching someone that they know and kind of do something new, and then it, it goes, is the best. But even when it doesn't go, it's so much more fun. Yeah. But, oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> is, it, is, it, is my pain that much more fun? Watching Lincoln well, Trudeau. Yeah. Watching Lincoln Trudeau, 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 exactly. Oh. Lincoln Trudeau, oh. watching him oh. bomb. Nothing yeah. better than watching Lincoln Trudeau yeah. bomb. But, but like, you know, like, Lincoln Trudeau would bomb like in so, uh, in, uh, everywhere else, but Honestly. sometimes he would kill here. Yeah, he would. Yeah. But, the, but so those are my good. favorite moments watching my friends on stage because, I mean, I'm here, so all my stuff is new off the top. So That's I, I either. It's growth. Yeah, but I mean, I've had openings where I do so well and I've had openings where I die and it's 20 minutes of death but that's like real. you guys yeah, yeah but it's real death yeah. I'm planning to overthrow yuck yucks <laughs> it's not gonna be Mark Breslin's yuck yucks anymore it's gonna be Dan Dunn's fuck fucks <laughs> Just said lost, budgie. Okay. Green and yellow reward. <laughs> and then two numbers. Boom. Homework. Any time of the day, these people are waiting for your call. So I talked to my uncle recently, and uh, my uncle, it's a gay midget, came out of the cupboard and it's kind of, it's kind of a small individual, he would say. When I die, I want a tombstone hooked up to like a motion detector and a loudspeaker with a pre-recorded message. So if anyone tries to step anywhere near my tombstone, they can hear, ow, 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 I'm back, ow, fuck off, stop, ow. One night at last call, um, I guess I served someone with attitude. Well, I had the attitude and I know this because she was in my face going, don't give me no attitude or I will mess you up. <laughs> My impression, this is my impression of a comedy album gone bad. It is a comedy album gone bad, where the uh, comic on the album has no concept of the audio medium. Okay, here it is. Hey, look at this jacket I'm wearing. Look at this funny picture. How am I going to carry donuts with this? Look at these pants. Hey, and hey. So I'm, I'm uh, thinking that, you know, whoever bought that album would be sitting at home looking at it going, man, what the hell could be so funny about those pants that uh, would deserve a laugh like that? <laughs> Maybe he's shitting them. You know. Take my advice here. It's bad luck to break a mirror. It's also bad luck to pick up the pieces with your mouth. <laughs> Keep it going. Keep it going. Keep it going. Thank you very much. Yes, I've, uh, I've actually got a, a new book coming out. It's a uh, children's book uh, about divorce. So that the parents are splitting up, they can give this book to their kids and uh, explains to the kids what divorce is and why it's happening and what the kids can expect. So look for it on the stands this fall. It's called If You'd Eaten Your Vegetables, Mommy Wouldn't Be Leaving Us. So. Uh, I love that joke. Uh, you still, and part of the glory of it is, there are still a million shit acts. Yeah, I know. Yeah. Oh, and that's I think that's cool. So we brought to her home. By the time we got into her home, I was hot, horny, and ready to go. I was actually undressing while we were still in the parking lot. And she was horny too. But for the wrong reason. Suddenly I found out this chick had a penis twice the size of mine. What did you do? 
<laughs> wait for the rest of the story, you motherfucker. <laughs> it's only a joke. What do you know? I agree with Dave. I think it's cool. That's a million shit. And no one's going to yeah. see yeah. it. Yeah. <laughs> I just want to make a point that Gavin agreed with me. Yeah. <laughs> For the first time. That's, well, it's on camera too, Dave. Now you're going over there to give this guy a piece of your mind, and you storm down your walk, you make a right and another right, and you start storming down to pound at his door, and then right beside the bell, two heads on a stick of the last guys that went over there to kick his ass. So when he comes to the door, you better be asking him for a cup of sugar, or you're in one heap of trouble. <laughs> Yeah, hi. Yeah, I uh, just wanted to let you know, listen, if your dog ever needs to take a crap, you feel free to use my lawn. Because I'm neighborly, baby, not like these two assholes here. Thanks. Good night, everybody. Do it. Remember that moment when the whole audience turned on me and you thought I was a lesbian? Oh, yeah. <laughs> she did mention that I was at Yuck Yucks, and that's... A different club, but don't think of that that way. Uh, headlining any of that stuff uh, here at Spirits, it doesn't matter whether you're an amateur or a professional, you're all the same. Shit. So, uh, don't think of that at all. So the whole point was is that I, I came with my book club to be here, um, and I brought like nine girls, and I had written about it, and I was still, I'd maybe done open mic maybe three times at that point, maybe. And uh, I came and there was no host. And uh, of course I had had half a bottle of wine before I came down because I was cooking. And uh, Rod was our manager at the time. And uh, I went up to him and I said something really like, this is really inappropriate. I brought all these people down and uh, there's no show. And do you remember what you said to me? Uh, you know, Joanne, if you can do it better, you get the gig. There we go, there we go. Yeah. Because in the beginning, we had the pool table open. Yeah. Do you remember that? Yeah. So, well, I mean, the years have uh, changed the room and made this a real comedy spot for up-and-coming comics that know the city and uh, this is a place where they can work their chops. What, according to my $7.99 watch from McDonald's, it is now 20 of 1 o'clock. 20 of 1 o'clock. 12.40. I don't know how many Thursday mornings I just said, listen, I don't know if I actually saw this last night at Spirits, but I could have sworn I saw these two people making it. <laughs> <laughs> then I meet someone, and his name, so I get introduced, and it's like, oh, this is Kelly Gruber. I'm like, Kelly. This is my favorite thing about the Kelly Gruber night. Because this, this is, again, when, when, you think, when, you think of, when you think of poor memories and poor judgment. <laughs> Because that was an anniversary. Was it the same time you were No, it was an anniversary. It was, it was an anniversary night. And yeah. of course, one of those great nights where everyone's here and the show's fantastic and Melon won't deign to watch the show. <laughs> <laughs> let me stand right around the corner. Let me stand just so I can't hear anyone or see anyone. Yeah. Because I book comedy and every great comic in the city is here. I better go on the other side and pretend that I have a job. <laughs> and, and we're here with Wharton and Wharton and Gruber and stuff. And, and, Adam and Helly, and Helly, and Helly, <laughs> Helly, and we'd, we'd always talk about Helly's ass. Because Helly's got this is making great ass. ass. Yeah, because Helly's got this, Helly's got this, this great different ass. I like how you're looking. Well, it's being videotaped. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, but so, but, but so, 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 so Gruber's no, 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 and, it's, and, and I'm all excited because it's one of the rare times since Gruber's here. It's one of the rare times that Helly's taken an interest in stuff. No reference. Thanks for coming to the show. Someone's like, do you know who you're talking to? I'm like, oh, he's famous? Yeah, more than you. I'm from Montreal. We watch the shitty expos. I don't know anybody. So he's like the all-time number 17. Give him a round of applause. He's in the room. That is a tip. That is a typical Joanna Downey moment right there, right? Because I'm just like, oh, maybe he wants... I've had famous people talk to me. I'm like, oh, you want five minutes? 
the last time it happened was one of the writers from Conan O'Brien's show. And uh, I know, I was just like, well, you didn't call. He's from New York and he's on Conan and I'm like, wow. Right, my favorite on-stage moment in Spirits is when Zed Lacker and I did uh, Dueling Schwarzenegger. Yeah, that's, that's right. That's right. Night. <laughs> and just the two of us with our big melons. <laughs> <laughs> There's much damage around here. <laughs> you, know, you would say there is so much, it would be... Cuidado! <laughs> But I missed somewhere I wasn't here for the moment. <laughs> the point that I'm getting to is Mike Moses came up to me and he says, some dude just got strangled by another dude down in the bathroom. Because so, some guy ran up the stairs That's and was right. like, someone just tried to strangle me downstairs. And then no one was like, yeah, what? There's a show going on. <laughs> when I lose away, everything goes to shit. If you disown oh, yeah, someone that a few weeks ago, <laughs> oh, yeah, a couple months ago, <laughs> What's you, you that? Earl banned yeah. yeah. ban someone uh, yeah. like a couple weeks when ago. I, yeah, I remember that. that. He, went away. he actually said, well, was I was waiting wedding? for this. He actually said, you, you're not allowed back. You in will this never room. work. You will this never room work again. this room again. Yeah. And I started laughing. Yeah. And then, and then Gavin went up. I, I went up. Yeah, I, mean, I was scheduled to go on, so then I start hacking on Earl because I said to Earl, I go, "When's the later, Earl?" Because I, I always want to never work this room. Again. <laughs> I remember that. I would hear rumors where people would say, "Oh, I'm banned from Spirit." Like I had that yeah, power. Yeah, yeah. First of all, I drank. If I banned you on Wednesday, you're fine the next Wednesday. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This thing will last a week. Remember, I can't come back for seven days. <laughs> <laughs> Killed, yeah. killed, but everyone had a moment up here where the audience became their best friends. 
everybody that was on the show, and that's I think what, what it's about. It's like everyone becomes uh, uh, like like the audience just connects with each comic. I want to thank you all for coming out this evening. It is my sixth anniversary of hosting this room. Um, actually, the the, uh, the person that brought me here for the first time to cheer me up, Dimitri Papa Theodoro, whose name I still can't say, is in the room, so we can give him a round of applause. Oh, times are good. Um, I do host and fill in for Joanna when she is not here, but when I am not being a mom, she hosts and fills in for me. Oh, my God. Did you get over the news? Rosie O'Donnell is a big mo. I had no idea! But I, I couldn't help but do the joke of... Uh, Fuck me! Fuck me! Fuck me! Fuck me! <laughs> so I, uh, I get to sleep in on Sundays now, which is so, so much better. My home number is the same number that comics have to call to get booked on this show. And what's happened is, over the years, there's been confusion between my personal life and my, my comedy life. There was this case when a, a guy called me and I told me he had five minutes on the 15th. Yeah, he was a nurse looking for a date. I told him he was up 7th, he was following Lisa, he was very upset. <laughs> I used to, uh, I used to go fishing with my sister a lot uh, when we were younger and, and she didn't like taking the fish off the hook. Which is okay, I didn't mind doing that. The part about fishing that I didn't like was baiting the hook with a worm. Well, no, she had no problem with that. So, so what we, we did was we set up a system where she would bait the hook with a worm and I would take the fish off of the hook. And this one time, I remember, I, I got it all confused and I kissed her. <laughs> that time what about you he said here you are a lady he says you're not the least bit affected by the glamour of the cosmopolitan magazines he said up and down i'll leave me with your fat arse i think that's grand <laughs> he goes you're a good cunt i'm like ah, i ended with a compliment <laughs> Yay. oh joanna downey the woman that turned me gay Has a good chance of turning me back tonight, but. Ooh, do you want that? No. Um, let's see. So I just want to say, first off, I, I love spirits. I love Joanna, and I just we need to give her another round of applause because she's so fabulous. She is. I, I do. I love this room. Um, the first. I think this is like the probably the first room that I ever really enjoyed doing stand-up comedy. So it's uh, it's sentimental to me. Squatting on my lawn, looking back at me like I'm the freak. What are you looking at, fucker? Um, It's the sixth anniversary, celebrating six years of telling the back of the room to shut up. <laughs> okay, this is what I've done, my contribution to this room, really. Joanna Downey, six years of this. Oh, if that handicapped washroom could talk. But anyway, I'm not saying anything, I'm just, I'm just saying. Anyway. You take them when you can. Don't look at me like that yet. And then after 9-11, uh, Boyd had the funniest post-9-11 joke ever, and my mother fell in love with him. The and that's who the farted? Who <laughs> 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 That's the... All right, well, I got the light, and uh, I've got one bit, but it's too sick tonight to do. And it's too sick. All right, you asked for it. So uh, I watched that 911 documentary on CBS, and uh, wasn't it great? It was fascinating. It was great. But here's just one thing I want to make fun of: uh, when they had the video, when the first plane went in, and then like the thing is, everyone in the city brought out their video cameras and looked, you know, because it's like the thing that, that, and everyone's just focused on the tragedy that's happening. But the great thing was, well, not great, but the scary, the weird thing was, like everyone's in shock. You can't believe what's happening. You know, it, it, it's. it's Everyone's in shock, and all you hear is like the people talking, but you don't see their faces on the, uh, around them. 
it, it, it's kind of like the sounds of New York while the tragedy is happening. It's like, um, oh, uh, oh, what happened? Oh, what? The window washer scaffolding exploded? Oh, uh, oh no, a plane landed in the building. Oh, oh the plane crashed in the building. Oh, I see. Oh, well, I guess this other plane's going to come and put up the fire then. And the tower, the plane will just come and put up the fire, I guess it's what it's... The plane hit the other tower! The plane hit the other tower! Holy shit! Holy fuck! Oh, I guess that other plane just gonna land on top of the tower and pick the people up from the fire, I guess. It is. I saw it in a movie once. Yeah, it was good. It was good. Arnold Schwarzenegger and Jeff Goldblum. It was a great movie. Oh, here it comes. It hit the tower! The plane hit the other tower! Holy shit! Holy fuck! The plane in the tower! They got the other tower! Oh, they did! Oh, they did! Get out of here, everyone! Because I'm fucking dirtbag! Set, which is literally just jokes I can only do with spirits because yeah. they don't go yeah. over anywhere yeah. else. <laughs> that's the, everyone, everyone was just trying to get stage that's time. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Everyone that's was just trying to get stage time, time. And that's why the room was such a great. I mean, because yeah. so, so many people got good here. My goal in life, I say it now, my goal in life is to do spirits and not be filthy. That's my goal in life. <laughs> Firstly, I'm not a comic. I think, firstly, I'm a fan of comic. Comedy and since well, you are a comic now, but I think that it was it was the the journey of watching people that it, so just as a people like my whole life was watching people go up and even now I think that I have less patience because I think now I'm booking the show uh, probably seventy percent my friends and thirty percent new people. But you always get new friends though. Tell me, what's the meaning of life? Cock jokes. Lots of them or? Lots and lots of cock jokes. I don't worry about punchlines. <laughs> well, that's all I got. Thank you very much. You're doing great. ever to be a stand-up and Christine you remember that I like, remember that. I had no I, I, I never was anything and we talked about this all the time it was just like I never wanted to do this professionally it was not a desire of mine I couldn't understand but the only friends I had did this so I would latch on to these twats and then did you guys, you remember it? every week but it was interesting back then was that it was the same comics every week for like the first year and then people started coming, like you and Ophira started coming, so that kind of broke it up. Sometimes you can just mention me and not Ophira. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Earl the Squirrel doing sounds and like we put our hands together and warmly welcome him to the room, please, my friends. And he'll just be fucking up all night, so I'll be good. Oh, good. That'd be wonderful. Uh, thank you all for coming out this evening. But no, you no. didn't invite him. I never invited yeah, Earl. He yeah, showed up. Yeah, and showed but everybody show. remembers how much equipment. I used to think that like fucking ACDC was showing up to do a concert. Because Earl would show up with his, his, his oh, yeah. dolly of yeah. equipment. Didn't he have his kid yeah, yeah, yeah. up? Yeah. He had his children here a couple yeah. of times. He but he would always... Put him in the, the back. Equipment. Put him in the storage locker. Just put my kids in the, in the <laughs> whole storage area. Damn. Well, you have a good life. This is all I ask. If I didn't fuck up the setup, that would have been a lot better. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is, was that the Michael Jackson the asshole yelling at me now? <laughs> fuck your fucking asshole, Rita. Jesus Christ. Honestly, man. Honestly, you're the worst birthday boy in the entire history. <laughs> You too. I like you a lot better when you were shut up three seconds ago. You're a good person. You're a good person. I didn't. I didn't mean to shit on you. You're drunk. You're not a bad person. Just shut the fuck up. That's all. I'll say. Oh, well, fuck the rest of you too then. I can't blame myself for the way I am, so I blame my parents. Anyways, I have like these moments every once in a while where it just I just become like super gay. Uh, so I'm Tim. Hi everyone. Uh, 
I'm a bit of an asshole. I don't mean to be. Uh, it just happens. Uh, sometimes unintentionally. Yeah, so as a kid, I did what all good kid, Christian kids do. I joined a Christian rock band. Yeah, we were called Witness. <laughs> Dad loves you to death. Man, my dad loved me so much until I put on a pair of fucking skates. <laughs> Fuck that. Why is Tim Hortons a symbol of Canada? Cause it's been around since the 70s and there's one in every town. Bullshit. That makes Tim Hortons as much of a symbol of Canada as a crystal meth lab. <laughs> Tim Hortons isn't a symbol of Canada. Got it. Got it. <laughs> yeah. Get the... Alright, I'll just get off. Thanks. Uh... <laughs> this is like the oddest show ever. Like, it started weird. And what's going on with Sonia just yelling at people? Do you know, Brian? Yeah, who gives a shit what you think? You already had your time. You can't just yell at people. Anywhere, fantastic, but just during the show, they're not yelling at comics while they're on stage. You can't do that, man. It's part of our code. We let them suck on their own. So we're fucked with the election, huh? Are we fucked? That's my birthday, the big 2-3, uh, which is uh, kind of sad. I think now officially I'm too old for Joanna. I don't know. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> Waka waka! <laughs> My career's fucking over. <laughs> they come out because the West used to be the real test. You exactly. know, the Western Yucks rooms. And then, but after these rooms, it was like, no, you can roll with anything. Yeah, and like, yeah. every guy would come back and go, yeah, nothing threw me. Yeah. You know what the anger yeah. issue with me right. right now is that they're waiting, like new, new people are waiting eight Once, weeks. Eight weeks, yeah. And then sometimes three months, because... Wow. What kind well, of a well, they should have been here ten years ago. Well, yeah. this is working. Hey, we were here with it. But ever being that nervous? Well, that's well, it. But that's it's the whole, testament. like like Paul said, like you want to do new material. Yeah. I don't have a beaches joke, but I just, I have to do one. Uh, everybody else did. But I'm just gonna, here's my beaches joke. Uh, you just know they're gonna refer to it as the biatch. <laughs> Thank you, Joanna. Thank you very much. Thank you, Earl, for that medley of uh, Jock Jams 95. And uh, Jesus up on the cross, he's nailed right to it, like a speeder all bent, and they just hammered him right in, right? And then other churches you go to, there's like a little footrest on the cross, and he's nailed to that. Makes it tough to believe. You know? Because all I'm saying is get get the story straight. Either Jesus had it rough or he didn't. That's all I'm saying. Ah, uh, that would have been funnier if I'd said easy. Had it easy. Is that yeah, okay. Well, so you know this is what this room is all about, right? You, you say a joke and you go, fuck, that would have been really good if they had laughed. And uh you get it out of your system, you know? So I don't know about you, I'm a little old fashioned with animals, I just don't think you should actually have it carry around a dog in your purse unless you're actually going to pay with it. <laughs> no, but seriously, that could work. That could work in some countries. That would work in Korea or the Philippines. Now, I'm not denigrating the Philippines. I I'm mocking the Philippines. <laughs> A friend of mine and I, we just finished doing like this competition uh, at the Laugh Resort. We just finished, and I've been doing like the same jokes over and over for like the last three weeks. So it's all new tonight. So please don't judge me too harshly based on that. I just have to get the taste of like six month old cop jokes. And, uh, um, what? And they don't actually taste like fuck off. Whatever. All right. But then he pulls out sex toys. Now, is that, that's creepy, right? Because it's just a date. We're not in a relationship. We didn't go buy them together. But a part of my mind, I'm like, wow, we're getting dirty tonight. Yeah. And then another part of my mind are like, are these fucking clean? <laughs> like, you can't just keep them in your hutch next to your fucking wine glasses. You know what I mean? I want to see them come out of a dishwasher. 
<laughs> All right, that's too dirty. That's fine. I love to, that's my fiance. I love Joanna Downey. We were in Cuba together. It was so funny because we had to, we shared a room. I had to share a room with this drunken slut. And um, the rule was, the rule was, if either of us found someone and we brought them back to the room, we'd have to share. <laughs> So Christopher. <laughs> yeah, this is gonna be five minutes of hilarity. It, uh, my name is Brian Hope. My card says Hope. He's funny. <laughs> It's it's really the UN and, and it's really like well, home base well that's a, yeah that's the reason why we came here in the first place there was, uh, initially there was no, there was no other place it's like, mm -hmm. there, 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 I I love the fact that no man place land, everybody, everybody can come yeah. right like all your buddies from Yachts can hang out all your buddies from the Laugh Resort can hang out and you just be funny I'm so is Brent Boyd Paul you. Finn and Brian, and you were all, and this is when the wall wasn't there, and they all sat around the end of the bar, and so I went to whoever was working that <laughs> night, and I did this, meaning I'll buy them around. What she understood was, I'll buy them all their drinks. I got them. I got them covered. I got them covered. So at the end of the night, there's this tab for. But like, the great thing is that me and Brent and Finn and Boyd don't drink. <laughs> <laughs> My bar tab was like almost 400 bucks, and I was making $25 oh, wow. that night. I had to do 81 sets to work <laughs> Spirits is also the best fag hag bar in town, isn't it? Isn't it? Is, that, is there one girl here who has a boyfriend? Anyone? Is there one? Anyone? Come on, ladies. They should fucking change the name of this bar to the spinster and the feaster. <laughs> My parents were here at 6.30 and they got their table. And the only people by the bar are Wilma, Lewis Black, and Robin Williams. And I'm like, oh my God. Stay but it was here. so funny because I was, I was so, I didn't think anybody was going to show up because you were late, Kenny was late. But yeah. then you guys couldn't get in. 
Yeah. But it was interesting because you went up what, like six that night? Yeah. So you had to follow. I had to follow. Uh, Michael Beaumont let it off. Yeah. That's <laughs> the opening act. Then it was uh, then Lewis. It was Lewis Black, Robin Williams, and then uh, Kenny. Paul, and then Kenny, and then Paul Irving, and then Sean Cullen. Well, it's not even rack off. But the, what, it, what, it show, what, it, what it shows though is when those guys were here by themselves, there was no one here. So it just shows that you and Paul are the draw. <laughs> Because they were listed. They were the other guys weren't listed. Nobody knew they were coming. Uh, yeah. Happy birthday, Joanna. 27 years young. I was here when she opened the, the show uh, here at uh, Spirits uh, when she was 14. She started this whole ball of rolling. And uh, I was a bit nervous in the back when he made fun of Jesus and talked about cancer, but it turned out to be a good joke. Uh, cunty, 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 cunty. And the dirty word is Fanny, and that fucked the wife up. That Fanny is the cunt in Ireland. And she, I just told her, don't say Fanny, that's the dirty word. And the old lady goes, Fanny, and the fucking bar hushes. And you know there's a guy in the back going, did you hear what the cunt just said? Can you believe that? Here we come out for a nice night of drinking. Here at Cuntley's. No one knew there'd be Fanny talk at Cuntley's. The back is going to get chatty, especially when I'm on stage, because that's respect. Mama's, ta Mama's talking, babies. The great joy of being here is to read my read news in my country, and since I'm not there, I go, I literally forget that I'm a part of it. It's wonderful. I'm watching CTV going, God damn, look what those fuckers are doing. God, I'm, not, I'm glad I'm not one of those assholes. The, uh, I, I'm serious, you've loved every minute here. Um, the only, and, and, and when you go to another country, generally, unless you're just a dick, you have a tendency to really love that country because you really don't know what an asshole is in that country. You don't. You got no fucking judgment for that. Because if they do something, if somebody, you know, takes a shit on the sidewalk, you go, wow, that's really quaint. You know, my own city, I'd panic, but here I'm going, how charming. What a lovely people. Sorry, girls, I'm married. Anyway. Well, right now we're talking about Canada. We're talking about you. We're talking about you kind, wonderful, naive people. You believe we're your friends. <laughs> Don't trust us. We're like the sociopath that goes, I care about you. <laughs> we will fuck you as soon as you bend over the couch. We will take your water, your oil, your wives, and we'll all do it in the name of democracy. We'll say, but we have democracy, but not a real one. Right now, the Iraqis are writing a constitution. I said, take ours. We're not using it. And uh, one time I saw the world's worst stripper. I don't know if she was having a bad day and she's a good stripper, or maybe it was just I caught her on a magic uh, performance. So I'm going to recreate her little routine for you tonight. So, uh, so uh, I take you now to the uh, to Red Deer, Alberta. 
the export in on a Tuesday at noon. because my babies are going to dance with Mama. But we're gonna, I'm tired, I'm tired. And we're going to do what we do every Wednesday night without the celebrities. Mama's going to take a dance. Yeah. Because it's, yeah, it's a lot. You know, I, I hit on some American celebrities tonight, and John, they had nothing for me. And I think a gay man is what I mean. And uh, we're just going to bring it down for a second, okay? Because I feel the love in the room. Just one call Like a 